Hey guys, going to something simple today and we're going to do the uh, steps of how to prep your models and how to paint your models when dealing with small scale 3D prints. Okay, so this video is going to address the most common questions I get around how to handle 3D prints. I've got a variety of pieces from small to large. Uh, they're all test prints that I've done to work on and the number one question that I get asked is do you need to wash them in soapy water? No, you don't. So you can start working on them as soon as they come out of the packet because they are fully cured uh, as part of the 3D printing process. So we'll start with the smallest one because all you're going to need for something of this scale is a hobby knife. And what I do is I always place the piece firmly on my cutting mat um, so that you're not bending or putting pressure on the piece. And then all you do is you take your hobby knife nice and sharp and you nick the pieces at the bottom here. You can see the supports are quite strong. And then what happens is there's a very tiny connection here so you just lift them away from the model and then it comes away with no problems and you just repeat that across the whole piece. And as you can see they've come away nicely with no problems and we just snip off these little support pieces that held it all up and they'll fit in the movement tray, no problem. Right, next up we're doing something more medium sized that is actually on its own base. So the model is here and this is just actually part of the print process and supports. And you don't want to keep any of this versus the previous one. So what I do is I take my clippers and step number one is to separate this rigid base uh, from the individual supports which stops any parts breaking off um, because the rigid part is then taken away and just snip them like this. Once those more robust pieces are removed, again, these little uh, tiny supports will just peel off the model like this uh, with no issues. If you ever get really stubborn pieces and it doesn't start to go, you can dip them in hot water to soften them. Uh, but the problem with, with small models is uh, you can soften parts that you don't want to be uh, bendable, like say a gun barrel, for example. Obviously this one broke off as it was a test piece, um, but these then just peel away. On the base like this where you want something um, very smooth, you can sand this um, if needed. Uh, make sure you wear PPE for the dust because this should be handled as any other type of resin, don't want the dust around. But other than that, I don't think you really need to. Um, you get some stubborn ones inside the model, like this little one uh, that's in here. Again, all you need to do is use a hobby knife in there to slice it, and then it's narrow attachment means it usually pings away. And finally, we're here at a large terrain piece. Now, this one does have some finer detail parts, so I wouldn't actually submerge it in water, but if it was a, a more robust part, like a part of a vehicle, um, you would want to dip this in hot water this way down so that the model and the connection points go into the hot water, and then you should be able to, largely speaking, peel it away. If you get resistance, uh, don't pull really hard. Either reheat it again, or if you're getting particularly stubborn supports, you get your knife out, all you need to do is nick up here even just put a fault in one or two of the uh, more robust supports and then again using the cutting away the base process like this uh, part should then very easily come away from the model like this. And then sometimes on a very big part you may get these tiny little nubbins left behind, uh, a pass with a hobby blade like that and you're good to go. And as I was clipping away the base, uh, majority of these came away. Um, these little nests, you just gotta kinda be careful. If there's a big bunch of the nests, you may want to snip them into smaller parts just so they don't put a bunch of gathered up pressure on one piece. And, but other than that, these tiny little supports here that are actually part to part, you can see they're attached both to the bottom of the model here and here. Uh, just get a hobby blade behind them um, and very carefully sort of slide it along. Uh, disconnect them from the base of the model. Most of the designers put them on a non-detailed part as you can see here and then again they just ping away um, as shown with the smaller models. And the only other thing to pay attention to is the difference between what's the support that goes model to model. You can see here where it narrows towards the tip and is like a cone shape um, and those that are parts of the model this is actually a steel beam that holds up uh, the crates in this ramshackle um, design here. Just being careful not to take those off unless you really don't want them there, but you can tell by the way they're connected to the model by not having a narrow connection point. They're not actually a support, they're part of the miniature. Okay, and here's a cleaned up piece. You can see doing it this way, we haven't had any casualties. All the little hoses that are attached to the pumps are still there. You've got bits like this tire and these bottles where if you were too rough and just tore it off the supports, they probably would come away because they've got narrow connection points. But now that they're not being pulled on by supports, they're actually pretty robust. 
um, even the little fences have come out absolutely fine. So a little care uh, goes a long way and you don't need to necessarily dip them in hot water unless they've got supports that are like of a significant thickness. Um, other than that, most of the work can be done with a hobby knife and a pair of clippers. Okay, time to address the next question, which is how do you paint your minis? So I'm gonna start with the really small stuff, um, and that is because contrast paints are your friend here, or speed paints or whatever equivalent you've got with a little bit of medium in. If not, you can definitely do this with uh, base paints and a wash and a dry brush or highlight. Um, and if you're going to, I would suggest you get a decent white and also an off-white uh, for doing the dry brushing. I'm a really big fan of uh, pale sand as an all over highlight if you can do some dry brushing but we'll start with the contrast paints because they're the easiest. Now this is my example mini of what you can do with the contrast paints mostly the one in the middle. Um, the green uh, was done with a contrast paint and then all I've done is picked out one color red uh, a little bit of bone and then this was a contrast paint on the weapon and that from tabletop distance is absolutely perfect. You can do some details like picking out the tongue and teeth but you really don't have to go far and things like this bright green here uh, this was, uh, I think, Striking Scorpions green. This is Thin Down Pterodon Turquoise, and here's my test for the yellow as well. So you can see that uh, the detail of these miniatures does a lot of the work for you. Uh, Lizardmen are particularly good, um, but the other ones are just as good. You know, this is where you can see that it really gets into the details, um, and Contrast Paints is your friend for small scale miniatures. So with contrast paints you do have to be neat sometimes but I'm of the slap it on get the majority colour done so I'll get a little bit of the medium uh, about one part to two or three parts of the actual colour that you want and then I'm of the slap it all over the miniature school um, so I'll just do it on this guy on the end and you can already see it's picking up the details really nicely um, so I would just basically myself do this whole strip uh, with this paint um, all the way along move on to the next one because you're looking for speed and efficiency and doing it in this batch painted process once you're doing an entire army is definitely the way to go. But not everybody has contrast paints or your colour scheme may not really warrant using contrast paints in which case you can do a lot with dry brushing and layer painting. So this particular strip I've primed in black and you can prime these with a rattle can or you can use a brush on primer. I actually use brush on here because I had it in the house ready to go um, but if not a rattle can will work just fine and using a little bit of simple dry brushing we can get a lot of the metallics and things done so this is a good demonstration of why i use this flexi resin uh, if you try and dry brush heavily like this on the rigid types you're going to end up with a bunch of snappages whereas this stuff uh, won't break on you so when you're painting um, and i just go a quickly and cross like this with, for the dry brush to do the armor. And you can see at this scale and this distance, that's perfect. You can do some washes with some browns to do rusting and things like that if you really want to. Um, you can go to town as you like, but for basics, that's pretty much a happy point right there. All right, here we're gonna be really quick and I'm gonna go in with some red, just a nice, uh, Mephiston red's my choice here, but anything that's a decent base paint and we'll just get this on the robes like this. And next up we picked out another detail with uh, a bone colour, it's going to be the faces and the hands. And I'm just going to get a rough coat on there because again we're going to do a wash in a minute to tie it all together. And you see we've got a nice rough bone colour on there. And the last thing to do now is to grab a brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the weapon hafts uh, like this, just to fill them in a little bit with some brown. And the shields inside any bossing and that should give us enough variation in colour to look good once the wash goes on. And now we're going to take a look at the unpainted and unprimed resin. Uh, you don't have to wash this stuff when it's washed and cured during the manufacturing process. There's nothing left on the surface. Um, it's just literally plastic, so it's good to go. And what you can do is take a decent uh, base colour, you know, base paint that's got good coverage. And you can, although I wouldn't advise it, but it's an option if you don't have any primers, to paint straight onto the resin. And as you can see, it takes the colour fairly well. It's a very matte finish on the resin once it's cured, um, so it does take paint. Uh, prime, it takes primer amazingly, but regular acrylic paints, it will take them at a push, although again, not a recommendation, but an option. All right, and here we have these two are dried now. You could play with them like this, um, but a little uh, picking out of some details on the contrast paint ones, so the shield in red and some items in gold um, is all I think you'd need to do here. And for these, we're going to take a look at just adding a little bit of wash 
uh, and how much difference that makes and with a single highlight if you want to put it on you can really make them stand out whatever work you're doing I would always look at your models this way down don't bother turning them upside down to paint underneath um, because you're never ever going to see them once they're on their little movement trays and on the table and here's my all over shade of choice Agrax Earth shade. Shades just about every color going. And again, I'm gonna go with a slap it on process so that it covers everything, including the metals to make them look nice and dirty because these are grave guard at the end of the day. As always with a wash, it has toned down the colors a little bit. Um, it's done some really nice shading for us. It's got a little glossy finish to it, but that's okay. We'll matte it afterwards. And next, we're gonna do a very simple two stage, some mega quick highlights, and we're gonna call ourselves done. All right, next up we're going to do the all-round wonder highlight that is pale sand. I'm just going to get myself ready to do some dry brushing. And it's going to be very lightly uh, done across as me a few metal areas as possible, but don't worry if you catch the odd one. So we're just going to do this to pick out the details and make them show up just a little bit more. And do this across the bottom, I would say half the model here, and occasionally catching the faces where you can. And there you can see it's nicely picked out the edges of details and things. And we'll do the same with the metallics now with a nice silver. I'm a big fan of Vallejo um, Model Air Steel, um, but this just gently flicking it across the edges of the blades and some detailing on the shields. And I think you've got yourself a unit that I'd call done. Well, let's do the back as well. Right, and I'm calling the paintwork on these guys done. The next step for me would be to just stick a little bit of sieved flock on their base, get them on their bases, and they're good to go.